So, um, may I call Dr. Marco Loparic? So he will tell us something um, about using the nanoparticle signature to predict disease course. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, so now something completely different. Uh, I would like to show you uh, actually how by using the mechanics of the cancer, actually we can predict uh, the uh, disease course. And uh, I'm coming from Domedis uh, company. It's a, it's a young startup here from Basel. And uh, I'm happy to present you this fascinating technology. Uh, what's, the, what's the current problem in, uh, in diagnostic? Uh, one of the major issues is that can cancer patients are uh, either undertreated or overtreated. What, what that means is that when they are going into the treatment, which usually is uh, uh, you know, consisting of the chemotherapy and extensive surgery, means that the quality of life is jeopardized and that the additional costs are actually rise. Why we have this problem? Because clinicians actually today, they don't know exactly how cancer will develop and behave. And uh, in other words, we have a lack of reliable markers of disease progression and recurrence. Uh, the solution which we are providing is called ARTITIS. It stands for Automated and Reliable Tissue Diagnostics. And as I said, we are using very, very sharp tip, 50 nanometers only diameter, to feel the stiffness of the cancer on the nanometer scale. Uh, to understand why, why this is important, why it's important to uh, measure the cancer on a nanometer scale, and why actually it's important to actually measure mechanics of the cancer, uh, I think it's the best to illustrate first the structural composition of the tissue. In this case, is the breast tissue. Uh, as you can see on the marker scale, we have one, uh, some global structures, right, to which has different functions. And when we move to the uh, micrometer and nanometer scale, actually we see that uh, we have a rather complex uh, structures here. Uh, we have, uh, in general, the uh, uh, two main components. One are the cells, right, and other part is the part which is surrounding the cell is called extracellular matrix, right. And now you can imagine that by using this very, very sharp tip of 50 nanometers, we can uh, separately actually measure the stiffness of the cancer cells and the other components of the extracellular matrix. Why this is important in the cancer? Uh, we first need to understand how cancer actually behave and how cancer actually develop. In this case, you can see uh, the cells which became the cancer cells and uh, the illustration of the migration of the cancer cells, which is the biggest problem today. So the, 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 the developing of metastasis in a distance organs is the uh, problem number one. And in order to achieve uh, metastasis, actually the first the cancer cells that needs to find the way to the distance organ and the very first part is breaking the basal membrane. So this red, uh, uh, this red uh, line actually is presented the basal membrane. This is the extracellular matrix. Here we have the second basal membrane and then we have a blood vessel. In order to actually penetrate the basal membrane, cancer cells need to change the mechanics. So in a very simple word, they are becoming softer, right? Uh, in the, um, on the other side, they're also releasing chemicals which are dissolving, uh, you know, uh, the structures like a basal membrane or the extracellular matrix. And now the changing of the cancer cell mechanics, so they are becoming more elastic, more squeezy, uh, and disruption of the extracellular matrix actually is allowing them to progress and develop. And this is exactly uh, two mechanical parameters which, are, which we are addressing. And of course, the one, uh, major requirement is that you have the technology which is allowing you to measure on the nanometer scale. So in order to validate the technology, we did a breast cancer study. Uh, what is important here to say that breast cancer is our focus, but the same technology can also apply for other uh, cancer types and also other tissues. So in our breast cancer study, we had more than 200 patients. So we also addressed different uh, types of the carcinomas which you can find in the breast. We also measure metastasis, lymph nodes, and uh, important to say that we measure all biopsies in situ without prior modification. And this is one of the advantages of the technology that uh, once the biopsy is harvested uh, with a core needle biopsy, so once the biopsy is out of the patient, we don't need to process it. We are measuring fresh and, uh, and in the shortest time. So what's the workflow? Uh, once we obtain the patient uh, breast biopsy, right, within the 50 minutes we can start with our TDS measurements, and then within three hours today, we are getting nanomechanical profile. On the, on the other line, uh, the, 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 the same 
uh, biopsy also is assessed by the gold standard today, which is pathohistology, then within two to seven days. Uh, they also have uh, the results uh, together with the sample which was measured by RTD. So we have one-to-one -one comparison, right? At the end, of course, we are doing comparison of the results and final diagnosis. What exactly uh, means uh, measuring uh, biopsy with arthritis? It's meaning that we, once the biopsy is obtained here, right, uh, with, a, with a sharp needle, we have the, the, the cylindrical biopsy here, and then we are measuring along the sample. So we are measuring, you know, between 10,000 and 20,000 indentation points, right? And along the sample, then we are collecting the stiffness values. All of these stiffness values, we are creating the histogram, and this is our actually the way how we present the results and how we can define if this tissue which we are measuring is healthy benign cancer and additionally if it's very aggressive or less aggressive. And um, the summary histogram is here uh, in comparison to the health tissue which has very uniform distribution with a very small spread. In case of the cancer tissue we have very prominent soft peak which we don't find in the health tissue and uh, we have additional uh, you know peaks which are representing other alterations in the in the tissue. Uh, from that results, we have diagnostic value to, dis to distinguish healthy benign cancer tissue and as well prognostic value to forecast the tumor uh, aggressiveness and by using this to optimize the treatment chemotherapy. That was uh, published in Nature Nano where we actually got a cover page. And uh, today we did a step forward. Uh, so we want to uh, expand the, the application to the into the diagnostic and, progno and, and treatment cycle. As you can see, the, the diagnostic cycle is starting with the screening, then different visualization methods like MRI, CT, ultrasound is used to uh, locate the lump. Uh, after that, the histology is done. And uh, one problem here we have already that uh, uh, once the biopsy is, uh, uh, you know, is, is harvested, uh, there is no good quality control, right? So the, uh, until they get it on histology, right? Uh, they, don't, they don't know if they have representative sample, right? So one uh, application would be to have, to use RTDs to do the uh, fast quality assessment of the, of the biopsy sample, if the biopsy sample is representative, because then the pathology also can uh, do properly uh, their part of the work and the patient, of course, uh, you know, doesn't need to come again into the hospital and, uh, and, and this is, uh, uh, has many advantages. Uh, on the other side, as I said before, uh, we did the four years follow-up uh, and we found that with arthritis we can also distinguish between highly aggressive forms of the cancer, right, and the low aggressive form. Uh, the difference is uh, that in the high aggressive form we have uh, a different mechanical profile, right, uh, while in the low aggressive form uh, which is in, in high aggressive form we have this very prominent soft peak and not much of the changes in the, in the extracellular matrix while in the low aggressive form we also are uh, measuring the, uh, the changes in the extracellular matrix and one of the very interesting part uh, which we are also uh, extending is uh, measuring the field effect because we found that uh, uh, during the resection, right, uh, so the whole tumor is, is, is actually cut it out, right, and then what is important that uh, the margin is clean, right, uh, so that the patient is, uh, after surgery, the patient is free uh, from, the, from the cancer cells, so histology is usually checking that this margin is, is uh, clean, and uh, this is then, uh, you know, the successful operation. What we found actually that sometimes when we measure this healthy part, which is declared by histology that it's a healthy part, we found that in some patients actually, from a mechanical point of view, it looks it's corrupted or it's not healthy, right? Although on the histology, it's, uh, you know, it looks uh, healthy. And uh, when, when we did the uh, comparison with the lymph nodes, right, then interestingly, we found the same signature uh, in those patients which we found that uh, the surrounding healthy tissue actually is corrupted from a mechanical point of view is not healthy, that in those patients we also found the same peak in the lymph nodes. What I'm saying that uh, we, have a, we have a strong, uh, you know, marker which is, uh, which is uh, measuring the, this field effect or, the, or the, uh, the surrounding healthy tissue and that basically just measuring this part we can already say if the cancer spread and what is the aggressiveness of the cancer. Uh, solutions which we have today, it's called Artis Research, is a fully featured atomic force microscope, right? And um, it's based on, a, a hardware part is based on a nanosphere technology, and we also have very importantly Artis Analyzer, which is 
uh, Foursquare processing software, uh, which is uh, which can process uh, in a very fast and high performance uh, way, uh, you know, numerous Foursquares. And uh, today we have uh, nine systems currently operational in the research and clinical labs. The ne our next steps are, of course, clinical trials or performance evaluation since we have IVD. Uh, and uh, getting ISO then and finally CE mark. Uh, today, this is our Artidis network, right? So, the, the, in principle, the centers were using uh, Artidis technology. Uh, we are now in the process of recruiting new centers for the performance evaluation. And uh, uh, also, what is important to say that we have that our scope of uh, the applications actually is not limited to the breast tissue, but also we have the results from other issues including the prostate cancer, liver cancer, but also the, the like a skin or other inflammations. And uh, also what is important to say that uh, on the, in the basic research field, uh, we can measure very accurately the same mechanism on the cells uh, or the spheroids, which can be built from the cancer cells or the extracellular matrix. Uh, the, as I said, the company is rather young and uh, we have at, uh, at the moment seven people uh, employed. It was founded uh, here in Basel and uh, that's it. Thank you. Now, very uh, interesting new technology you described. So let's see how that will be in clinical settings. So any questions uh, to Marco on his method? Okay, I'm a very practical person uh, to a certain extent. So where would you see this technique, let's say, uh, in the longer period of time in the clinical setting. Because histology, I think you will not replace it. Exactly. You cannot, um, let's say, improve the biopsy because no. it's still done in a different way. Uh, so where would you see it? In addition or maybe as the no, first exactly. yeah. fast part? Uh, this doesn't work anymore. Uh, I see it exactly in the uh, in the field of this added value, right? Where we are, where we are, where we are actually not replacing anything, but we okay. are providing new information, right? And this new information is oh, okay. Uh, and this new information actually is important for oncologists, you know, to improve the uh, the treatment. And one of the things is, as I said here, that we can do the fast quality control of the harvested breast tissue biopsies, right? Because not today, for example, in the prostate cancers, they're taking like, uh, I know, 12 to 20 biopsies. Why they're doing that? Because if they just take four, there's a really high chance that they don't have representative tissue. And that means the patient needs to come again. So if you can reduce, uh, for example, in this case, by 20% uh, or 30%, that would be the major step forward, right? Because for the, for the pro, in, the, in case of the prostate, taking 18 biopsies, right, that's a huge, right? Uh, the second part is the prognostic marker, which we are now evaluating. As I said, uh, we have a very, uh, very good results in the four years follow-up that uh, we can distinguish uh, different forms of, uh, forms of cancer. So today, oncologists using their TDs have this additional information, right, that can uh, better optimize the treatment. Because today, the problem is that, uh, you know, uh, that's why Today, in principle, we have uh, usually, you know, the, 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 the big meetings where you have different experts, a very integrative approach in principle when you try to find the best method, right? And this is the, the way how, uh, you know, we can help them to, uh, to classify the cancer. Yeah, that would be something very aggressive and very malignant, so you need to really go with a rather extensive uh, treatment or know this patient has a rather, you know, benign form or benign, low aggressive form of the, of the cancer, right? So may I challenge you a little bit? Sure. I mean, the point is, I mean, the biopsy, I agree with you, if you could reduce the biopsies, it would be, would be absolutely great. But I st still you have the point where you, have the, you take the biopsy. If you have the wrong biopsy, you know, delivered to you, I think you can maybe give some additional information if you have the right place. Otherwise, you could not solve that issue. Well, not necessary, because that, that's why we had a field effect, you <coughs> see. Uh, this is the, exactly the point, what you're saying, that uh, the cancer, you know, uh, in, the, in the standard term means only the, the cancer part which is visual on histology. Why, what we show here, that we can actually measure, you know, much, much more. We, we can measure the tissue that looks healthy, and by measuring our TDs, you can see that it's not healthy. So if you even miss the cancer, right, you will still have the, this field effect, which is product of the cancer. And usually you don't miss it, you maybe just have only a little part. And what you are saying is if you have then a, you could give some inter, uh, uh, individual more information to go further. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. One more question. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs>
I think very fascinating technique. Yesterday we heard an interesting talk about the immune system and the immune response. I was wondering if the aggressive and the less aggressive uh, cancer cells, um, if you measure really the cancer cells or maybe if the immune system uh, has also a factor here. Are there some thoughts in this direction? Yes, so this very much depends on the cancer type, right? So, for example, in case of the colon cancer, then immune response is very prominent and you, we, we, we can measure as well the presence of the immune cells. While in the breast tissue, for example, the immune response is not so extensive as there and then you have less, uh, you know, the, the, the prominent uh, the signature of the, of the immune cell. But at the end of the day, the point is here that, you know, uh, we, are in, we, we are just measuring the tissue and, uh, you know, the different uh, signatures, right? So we are just measuring the tissue, whatever it is. And then uh, the, 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 the benefit of using nanotechnology is that this cell has one mechanical profile while the, the another cell has another mechanical profile and the extracellular matrix has the third mechanical profile. And this is how we can distinguish. And for example, if you see that something, uh, the peak appear, then we know, well, that, that's, that is this structure there, right? And then we can correlate, of course, this with the, with the other methods, and then we can uh, say if there is some immune response or not. But this very much depends from our experience from the type of the cancer. Right? Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you.